G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers Survival. And I find it entertaining, although it is uh, sort of paying me out, but I do find it entertaining that I got the advice to put a safety device onto the grinder pit almost as often as I was given ideas about solutions for how to make this thing work better. <sighs> and a lot of people pointed out very sensibly that when I almost ran out of hydrogen down here, if the grinder was on, there'd be a very real chance that I could bounce my whole way down and get ground up into a pulp. And obviously that's not preferable. So I am going to put a safety device on here to start with, actually. I'm going to get rid of this sensor here because it's not really going to work how I wanted it. The best suggestions, I think, are to place a sensor, another sensor, on the roof or somewhere else static on the base that can detect whether there are small grids down here needing to be ground down because that sensor won't move and I could even have it trigger itself to turn off after it gets triggered once so that it doesn't keep re-triggering. But what I'm going to do is build this safety device first and I think I should be able to do it this way. If I extend this piston, that should give me clear access to putting a sensor on the side of either the grinder or onto this block here. If I was trying to do it up at this height, the voxels would have been in the way and you can't place sensors if there's any voxel material in their occupied cube. So we'll do one there and I'm going to set this up so that it will detect players anywhere, well, anywhere where I might get ground down by these grinders. How does that work? Yeah, I think that'll probably be able to keep me safe. So what this sensor is going to do, it is going to set up actions on entry to it. I want it to switch the base grinders off. And that's it. Nice and simple. There's my safety device <laughs> that will hopefully prevent me from dying when I, and I'm notice I didn't say if, when I run out of hydrogen down in this hole. And speaking of running out of hydrogen, I right now have only a single bottle. So I must be getting close. Yes, I am getting close. There we go. Hydrogen refilled. Good. So then we can place this sensor here, and this will be the one that triggers the whole contraption to start. And I've got two options. I can either try and set this up so that the sensor controls the head entirely, or I could just make it so it triggers a complete cycle using the timer as I was trying to before, but actually making it so that the whole head runs once through, and then while it's running, that sensor is actually switched off. Ooh. You got a bit damaged. Ideally, I would have this sensor all the way down on the ramp or something like that so that it didn't have to have quite so large a range, but I don't have any cubes down there yet, so the sensor is going to stay on the roof up here. Okay, so I've got it out to 48 meters and got a decent size volume there and I think it'll only detect full size chunks that get dropped down here so I won't detect all this other little rubbish so I'm going to try and use it now and I'm going to have to be careful not to accidentally trigger <laughs> everything to get switched off so what this sensor is going to do is Grind, oops, let's just name it first. Base, grinder, pit, sensor, start. Set up actions. We want it oh, to TB. Grinder, pit, start. Trigger now. And when it's empty, I want it to retract these pistons. Let's see if that works, just as is. Oh, whoops. Detect players off, detect small ships on. 
Okay, it's sending the grinder... Uh oh. It's probably not a good place for me to be when this is actually going to start grinding. Um, hopefully I don't get hit by any debris. I want to see if it finishes. When most of that sandbag is gone. I hadn't quite appreciated how much this shakes around. Prior to looking at it just now. I might do this. If we go to... Let's grind a pit pistons. Oh, wait. Piston 2, share inertia tensor. There we go. Okay. It has retracted. But here's the problem. It's still actually triggered. So, because it's triggered again... It's not going to restart. So I am going to have to set it up. Sadly, at the time I was recording this, I did not remember that I had the timer set to retract the pistons. And that function probably should have been turned off for this test. Which is a bit of an oopsie on my part. And I might come around to attempting it again in the future and hopefully remembering that this time. It's always so frustrating when I notice this stuff while I'm editing. Oh geez, there's a drifting pursuant near the base. Where did that come from even? That is a weird angle. Oh no, it's not. It's all good. It's the usual angle. Yeah! Yeah! Traces all around me. Let's bring this thing down. Whoa! Brought it down a bit quicker than I was expecting. Commando grinder attack. <laughs> oh. Oh, geez, landed on the other one. <laughs> it's it's cartwheeling. Oh, this is amazing! This is awesome! How far is it going to make it? Oh, it fell over. Oh, that was so cool! <laughs> oh, that was too awesome. I'm so glad I came outside for that. That was amazing. Uh, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So, back to what I was saying about the <laughs> sensor. Because it's constantly triggered now, it's not going to be able to re... St restart the whole grinder process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a timer block. Oh, actually, I wonder if I can do it with the current timers. Let's think this through properly. What I need to do is the grinder pit start timer block needs to turn off the grinder pit start sensor so toggle off so this sensor is going to trigger this timer block which will then turn the sensor off what i then need is the grinder pit stop one when it's triggered to turn the sensor back on yeah i don't need any other extra thing toggle block on And if I make the runtime one maybe a little bit longer, let's make it out to two minutes. That'll be around the duration it'll take me to get out there and come back. I'll leave that timer block just in case I do need it later. But this should all work now. What I've got to just do is cycle this sensor. What I'm... Oh, ow. That really did hurt. What I might do is... Go Shift-K, Terminal. Come on, Terminal. And... T. 
TB. Crown a bit start. Trigger now. There we go. Sensor turned off. Grinder comes down. Should take two minutes. And then it should turn around. Go back up. And then that sensor should turn back on, ready to be triggered when this thing eventually slides down the hill. I wonder if I can accelerate that process. And just patiently wait another 30 seconds and see if everything works. I suppose I could just click trigger now. But I'm not going to. I'm going to grind off more of this sandbag and see if I can get it to slide down the hill. I should probably consider this to be a scary place to be. Actually, I might save a bit of the sandbag just hopefully to be able to trigger this thing when it goes back up. Oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. That bouncing that I just did then was what I was worried would happen if I ran out of hydrogen in this space. Because then I would just bounce all the way down the hill and run into the grinders. And then it'd be mushy splitzy. It's just not a good thing. Okay, sensor is on. Let's make sure it triggers everything properly. If I grind through this, it should roll down. And of course I'm wrong. Come on. Whoa, whoa! Okay. <laughs> that was slightly terrifying. Come on. Don't make me play around in here any longer. I want to get this finished. Oh, there we go. Oh, the big part's sliding. This could be good. This could be good. Come on. You can make it. Come on. Why can't you be the one that's cartwheeling? Oh, it triggered. Yay! And then the whole thing will cycle, and then the doors up here will open. <sighs> That's what I was after. I think it's just going to be too hard to get the whole thing to work without... Ooh. I just thought of something. Instead of... Instead of this sensor, so we're going to call this base grinder safety sensor. Instead of it just turning these off, what I might do is set it up to retract the whole thing. Oh no. Nuts, can't do that. Because that will keep the grinders running. So I do want it to turn off the grinders, toggle block off. Then, when I leave the sensor area, because that's probably going to happen relatively quickly, I can then set it to retract the pistons. And that'll be a dodgy but effective workaround, I think. I don't like mining at night, and it is night. That means I've got time, which is good, to build a bunch more sandbags. Because I think four down by the mine is probably the bare minimum. Especially if I'm getting attacked by drifting pursuance from that other direction. I would like to have some sandbags off to the other side. I'm going to build another four sandbags. I'll replace the two that are on top of the mountain and I'll put two more down by the mine to have a bit more protection down there. If that doesn't use up the whole night, I might even make another four. Two more again where the ones that are still to be recycled are and another two down by the mine as well. That'll put us eight down by the mine, which should give us a good deal of protection down there. So that we can hopefully get this mining expedition underway as soon as the sun shows itself in the morning.
as an interesting aside, I've just reloaded the game because when I was in it just before making the sixth sandbag of the night, I was unable to weld up the antenna that's on the front. And the reason that the game was telling me I was unable to, uh, to weld that up was that I have exceeded my block limits. I could have sworn I'd turn them off, but it was <laughs> an interesting observation because I've just turned them off. So everything from this point is beyond what Keen had in mind, apparently. So I <laughs> apparently have placed a lot of things, which I had not realized that I really hadn't realized that I was that close to it. I knew I'd built a lot of stuff, but I didn't think I'd done that much. The only times I've previously managed to hit block limits was building stuff in creative. I have not previously managed it in survival, so I almost feel like it's a bit of an achievement. You may be feeling that it's a bit rough that I've hit the block limit, but if you think about the size of this base, it's huge. It is absolutely enormous, and I do have a lot of... Well, I've got a lot of sandbags and a lot of debris and a lot of other stuff that's out there and probably more than a few bits that are owned or in my mind are owned by the space pirates that are actually, as far as the game's concerned, owned by my player. Since I placed them all in creative mode and that means that some of the blocks still probably belong to me. Alright, eight sandbags loaded and ready to roll. Let's... Oh, actually, quickly before I... Ow. Quickly before I grab the sandbags, I'm going to do one thing that was suggested for the bin chicken, which is actually make it look a bit more like an ibis by giving it nice grey legs. I was also suggested to give it a long grey or black beak. Uh, I may do that later, but not just yet. <laughs> I was, I was actually given a very cool idea by 1WSX10 to uh, use the projector block to give this a beak so that the beak doesn't actually get in the way of anything but is visually there. Which is just the kind of ridiculous idea I usually like. Alright, that should be good. Now let's see if we can lock this one down. I'm deliberately leaned forward. For, uh, leaned back a bit for those so that I can be more likely to get clear when locking these down. Lock that down and lock that down. And there we go. Four sandbags. Let's head out. Oh, it's full on daylight out there. Need to get this done quickly. Might take this first load down to the mines. And then the second load I'll take up onto the mountainside. Oh yeah. I do love this deployment method. It looks so cool with the four sandbags attached. Plus I'm actually a formidable opponent with these. Because i got four cannons. And a whole lot of decoys. So I can probably take on some decent enemies with it. Now, I might, for these four, I might actually place them a bit closer to the mine entrance, a bit more where the, uh, where the goose sort of stays and waits. So these are more goose protection devices. So if I drop a couple here, because I usually park the goose on the other side of those trees, I think. So if we go drop number five, go across here, drop number six. Then if we probably go down this way a little bit. These ones are more if the other base that's actually managed to get stuff in to attack me manages to turn up but I'm going to put another one with the four that are over here because I know I get attacked from this side a lot 
the other ones should help if I get attacked from the other direction, which is rarer but still possible. So I'll push you up here, I reckon. There we go. It's five on the hill, three down the hill. That's pretty solid. I'm happy with that. Now we'll grab the other four. Actually, I'm already going fast enough to do this, so I'm going to grab these two up here as well. Whoops, that's a wall. That was a mistake. I was doing so well with my flying too. It's being a little bit aggressive and it is... Oh! Um, hmm. Come on. Can I... Budget? Come on! Go! 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 Fall! Yeah! Nice! Okay. And drop you. There we are. Now we can take the other four out, deploy them, and then it's time for the butterball. Because it's mining time. I hadn't quite appreciated just how close I was coming to the goose every time I was coming out. I was getting very, very tight. Very, very tight. And I realize I just did something incredibly stupid. I left this hill completely undefended while I went to collect these, and that was a bad idea! Luckily, I got away with it. I should have thought that through and just gone back home. Oops. Uh-oh. No, don't you go sliding any further. No, 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 no. That was a bad spot to put you, I know. Yeah, let me lock, let me lock, let me lock, lock, lock. Ooh. That could have slid the whole way down the hill. <laughs> Let's go up here, then, shall we? Nice. Now we got four up here. That'll make me a little bit safer from this point of view. Hopefully those four will be able to take care of anything that comes through before it even gets in range of the base weapons, which would be nice. And that is all I need to deploy. Now it is time to turn the goose around. So there's a little problem with the turntable, which I was told about on Discord, actually. Uh, someone had loaded up my map and had tried to turn around the goose and discovered something that I had not yet tested, which is that the goose doesn't really fit onto the turntable properly because I didn't actually measure out its width, as I should have done. I wonder if I can sort of finagle my way on. This might be a bad idea. Oh. 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 What's going on with the trailer? Uh, let's get some light. Aha. Trailer on? Yeah, the trailer's on. Okay. Now, I don't think I've got any timers set up to control this thing yet. Which is a problem. Base turntable rotor. Let's set our velocity to 0.25. I'm just going to do this manually. I will set this up properly after I upgrade this so that it's actually wide enough to fit the goose. <laughs> uh, we can probably go faster than this. Well, at least it does work. Once we are turned around, I will turn it off. And then next time I will upgrade it. I don't have enough iron to even rebuild it. I suppose I could just place down the blocks. And it'd work. But I definitely need to make it wider than this. And I think I'm going to end up making it two blocks wider. So that it's still centered on the rotor. Because if I made it just six blocks wide, it'd be funny. It'll have to be seven blocks wide. And... That went too far. But that's fine. Let's see if we can get off now. Come on! Get off the dang thing! No! Yes. 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 There we go. That was fiddly, but- Whoa! That's the buttercup. This thing's got some good acceleration without the butterball on the back. 
I'm going to have to remember that when I build some other trailers for it. That I can actually move very quickly when I have a small load. Let's load her up and let's go grab some iron. This whole ping short of iron thing is getting tiresome. Okay, let's head on down. In full daylight, without having to do a 50 million point turn to get over the bridge. And hopefully returning with enough iron to get at least the parking spot done. But maybe even a chunk of the bridge? Maybe? We could hope. I wonder if I should turn my turret on. I probably shouldn't since there's debris around. Like this piece over here that went cartwheeling down the hill. I still enjoy driving this thing so much. It is so cool that we can actually make a semi-trailer and drive it around. Something that's completely unstructured can actually let this happen. It's just so cool. I'm so... <laughs> I might, I might just be a little bit proud of this design. Maybe a little. It worked out so much better than I'd ever thought possible. I was actually expecting it to end up looking completely janky and having as many problems as the grinder pits had. But really, this thing shines. Let's hope... <laughs> Let's hope the headquarters is far enough away that it's not going to cause me a problem while mining. Because it has started spawning enemies against me. As we can see by the multiple enemy signals. Alright, time to get mining some iron. I am a little worried that we're getting close to the end of this. But I said that last time and it still seems to keep on going. Jeez, it feels like forever since I was down here last. It's like such a long time ago. I think... Oh. How long would it be? I... I'd just started getting attacked. It wasn't long after I'd started getting attacked regularly that... The, uh... That we did the last mining trip. So it wasn't that long ago, but it was a while. Which does bode well for not running out of the iron while we're building the next stuff if we go with a full load in the goose. Hmm. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Coming back to this mine feels like coming back to an old friend. An old, heavily armed friend now. <laughs> it's kind of cool coming out of that hole and seeing, <laughs> seeing a sandbag there. Ready to keep me safe. load this baby up onto the goose and head on home and amazingly head on home in daylight full daylight that's that's unheard of for me I can't believe how quickly I actually got this done and how early I managed to get out despite building all eight of those sandbags last night ah <sighs> A cool little bee when I get a printer, except then I obviously am going to run into more block limits and problems related to that. Alright, let's hop out. Let's hop in the front. Now, I didn't do the proper parking job this time, but it seems to have worked out okay anyway. Now, do I want to reverse down the hill? I probably can. Yeah, I probably actually can quite safely, because I can use the forward big thrusters to help me 
if I trust myself to uh, reverse a semi-trailer down a hill. This could get interesting. This could get very interesting. <laughs> I'm starting to regret doing this. I think we'll be okay. I think we will be okay. Oh, no, don't want to accelerate. Don't want to accelerate. I want to take it nice and slow. Nice and slow. Just curl around a little bit more. Ready to go forward. And ready to go forward. Come on. Yeah. Did it. Did it, did it, did it. That's the sort of thing that I definitely cannot attempt if it's dark out when I'm leaving. So I'm so happy to be doing this in daytime. I wonder. Ooh. We've got a lot more storage than I've previously had when dropping these off. I wonder if we could drop off the whole load and maybe even come down for another one today. Sure, I'll be driving at night, but that could help. It would mean I'd get double the iron, and then I'm definitely not going to run it out run out while building the goose's parking spot. This is tempting. This is very tempting. Hmm. It's a tough choice, though, because it does mean I'll be down here at night. But I guess what I could do is take advantage of that time and... Oh, actually, no. Uh... I'm going to need to give myself a little bit of extra time because I'm going to need the butterball to recharge fully before I come back down. And without the butterball fully recharged, I can't safely attempt a drilling expedition. Hmm. Dang. Dang, 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 dang. Oh, bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. And off. And thrust override off. Back to... Whoa! What are you shooting at? Wait, isn't that the turret control? Oh no, that's the turret control. What did I just turn on? I want those off. Whatever they are. I can't even remember what control that is. But you do not need to be shooting right now. I'll see how dark it looks when I've got a bit more charge in the butterball. But I reckon I could some... Oh, I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted to go mine at night. It'd be a great use of the time while the iron gets refined and I build up a bunch more steel plates and things to be able to build stuff with rather than sitting around here waiting while it all gets done. Oops. Did I just do damage? Nope. Stopped just. <laughs> okay. You're definitely going to have to reverse. You cannot sit there. Because I have need, I need to move. Oh, I need to turn that off. I need to move the buttercup out from your connector. Hope that Easy's inventory manager will grab all of that for me. So that I can grab you. Oh yeah, you're already empty. Yes. Empty, 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 empty. Yeah! How much iron did I just get? 902,000! Wow! That's quite a bit. I'm pretty happy with that. I am also almost out of hydrogen, so let's fix that. How long until you are charged? So it'll be about 10 minutes until that's charged. What if... Ooh, it would be going down completely in the dark. But we do have... Hmm. Oh, I really want to do this, but I really don't want to do it. Okay, how are your battery looking, Butterball? Let's check them out. Oh. Still got a little while to recharge. And I do really prefer to go out on a full charge. What I might do with the remaining light is I might head out and grab a couple of the bits of salvage that are nearby that are the big bits of salvage. But in order to do that safely, I may need to go down here first and turn you off. 
That way stuff won't get shot as soon as I drop it in the hole. Now let's go out and grab some goodies. I'm going to go first off and grab that one that cartwheeled down the hill. Then I might see if I can grab some of these other big ones because we are now able to safely collect those pieces. Now how big is this thing? I reckon if I cut it in half, I could probably drop each half down at a time. So let's do that. Let's grab our grinder. Hope that I don't get clanged out when I do this. Cut it here. Ah, oh, of course. I'm going to end up creating multiple chunks, aren't I? Yeah. Alright, there's one big chunk there. Will it be too big? Maybe. We will find out. Turrets should be off now. Gee, I really hope they are. Uh, I might just take this one bit in. I'll come back and grab those other ones. This is pretty chunky. Well, I'm not getting shot by the base turrets, so I think I'm okay. And no goose in the road. <laughs> That's nice, especially with the size of this bit of salvage. Do 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 do, nice and easy. Not getting shot by the tick. That's nice. Let's get around here. Let's see how poorly this fits in the hole. So I suspect it is not going to fit very nicely. If I sort of angle it like this, down on the right a little bit. Might be able to get it to slide down as a whole part. I drop it now. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Nice. Let's go grab some more. That was actually a lot bigger than I thought I'd be able to fit in there. That is very, very handy. Just have to be careful about the way you put it in. If I align it with the hole properly, it'll actually go in without any worries. It's always so hard to get landing gear to lock onto these damaged bits of steel plate. Ah, there we go. And that's it. I'm not going to be able to do the other ones. Get anything on the other one because there's two. Oh, I think the grinder just started. I think those thuds I'm hearing are from inside the grinder pit. All this distance away. Now, there's still nothing bad on the horizon. <laughs> uh, this is going to be fun to figure out how I can get this to get through the uh, the airtight hanger doors. When they're open, it's easy, but when it's closed, I'm going to have to try and maybe rest it on the back wall so it's tilted in the right direction when the doors open. I want to unlock number six. Yeah, that should work. When that's open, that should slide down easily. And drop those. Yeah, I reckon that'll work. Let's grab one more. That'll probably be the last little bit of salvage we do. We need to do for a while. Since we'll have all that iron being processed. And I've already started building some steel plates. So that we can get going on the welding of all of the various bits and pieces around the base that haven't been done. Which I'm very happy about. Have this one giant piece here. Oh, I think I just heard an explosion come from the grinder pit. It's never good. Must means the must mean that the doors got opened. Yeah, that's got to be the doors opening, and those big chunks sliding down. Oh, this is this is a big bit of salvage. I reckon I'm going to cook that thruster as well. I'm going to need to pick this up differently. In fact, I think I may just have to take this bit. It's such a large bit of salvage that I reckon I've got too much weight if I take any more. Oh no. No, no, no. Oh. Stop getting away from me. We are to be friends. Briefly. Maybe I can get lucky. Let's try it. I mean, it is only salvage if I end up having to drop it to keep the bin chicken alive. So be it. Nope. I can't even take off. Alright. 
Uh, that is the limit of what I can carry. Let's get home with this thing. I mean, it does have a couple of large thrusters on it, so I can understand how it would be very heavy. It's got three large thrusters in this chunk. Three large thrusters, nine small thrusters, at least, plus the ones at each end. I haven't picked this up in a way that I can get through the front door. I might lay this down and pick it up again. A little more level. Splitzy's going sensible! What is happening to the world? Oh, my big chunk's still there. It is wedged. Fantastic! Well, on that note, I'm going to park <laughs> and I'm going to grind down bits of those so that they can slide down the hill in multiple pieces. Alright, how are we going to get this to work? I think if I'm careful and I grind here. Oh yeah. And maybe if I grind this one. This is going to get trapped in the doors if I'm not careful. That's a really bad idea. Oh, that's a lot of explosions. That was a lot of explosions. Hmm. Why aren't the doors closing? What are you doing to me, sensor? You should be working. Why aren't you working? Why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why? Grrr, why aren't you working? You must have somehow got trapped on. <sighs> okay. So the sensor was working and it is no longer. Which is very annoying. Very, very, very. That means I'm going to have to manually trigger this thing. I'm going to just have to put a button panel in so that I can manually start it when it doesn't want to. Uh, TB. Grind up, hit, start. Trigger now. Alright. Well, even though the grinder pit still doesn't seem to be working despite what should be a system that just works. At least, at least now when I manually start it, I'll be able to just know that it'll come back to open by the time I return with, say, the bin chicken. And I can use a command on the hotbar of the bin chicken in order to control this as well remotely, which is nice. That should be all easy to set up. All I've just got to do is say base TB grinder pit start and put that in there. But it would have been nice if it would be sensor mounted, but it seems like the sensor system just isn't wanting to work with this. Which is frustrating. But yeah, with the timers, at least when I start it, it'll cycle fully and it'll reset every time I use that method, which is good. That's got to be some goodies in that got to be some amazing goodies well we've got a ton of iron we should have a, a plenty of steel plates soon not really from this grinding although those parts do contain quite a lot of them but more from actually producing them so i'm gonna get to welding up the goose's parking spot very very soon and expanding the turntable so that it actually fits because i didn't actually measure it when I made it, which was silly. It was very, very silly. Ah, progress. Lots of progress. And there's plenty more progress to come. So I'll see you then. <laughs>